Very pleased to have Dr. Stephanie Van Watson on. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. She is a veterinarian and epidemiologist. Did I get that right? That's right. That's right. Okay. And one of your claims to fame is that you've worked with this very, I think anyway, it may not seem secretive to you, but it seemed very kind of clandestine when I was in the environmental reporting world, this marine mammal program with the U.S. military, specifically with the Navy. And I actually tried doing a couple of stories about it when I found out that it existed. It's, it's very hard to find somebody who would go on camera. I don't necessarily blame people for being a little nervous about this one, but what we talked about when I was on the Dr. Drew show, where you were kind of in the waiting room, you were going to do your segment after me, is that I, I really found out most about it from my husband, who was a reconnaissance Marine, a special operations Marine. And he was off the coast, not like way off the coast, like just basically at the base on Coronado, somewhere around there. You're probably like, she's botching all of the geographics. And I probably get the story. <laughs> good, of, good, the, the meat of the story is that he's working with his friends who were doing the dolphin training for this program. And one of the dolphins kept signaling that there was something, there was a threat under the water. And they were like, you know, she's just being obstinate. She's a female dolphin. And they never do what we say. No, <laughs> but <laughs> we did say they were harder to work with. And she just kept going down. Like they wanted her to find this fork at the base of the ocean. And she, instead of coming up with the fork, she just kept coming back up saying, you know, alarm, alarm, alarm. And they're just like, there's nothing there, you know, go get the fork. And then finally she comes up with this guy in her mouth and he was diving illegally in that area, poaching lobster. And anyway, she had brought him up like a hundred feet or something really fast. So then my husband had to take him to hyperbaric treatment before the cops came. And it was like this whole thing. But anyway, I was like, wait a second, wait, they have dolphins in the Navy. This is crazy. I had never heard of this program before. So where do we even start with this? What, what was your first contact with the program? And, and did you like apply to work for it? Or did they tap you for this? Like, how do you become a veterinarian that works for this program? Yeah, Allison, I, I will say for me, it, uh, it was a it was fortuitous. Uh, because as some people may know, like, I don't even know how to swim and I'm terrified of deep water. So I uh, certainly was not planning on becoming uh, a dolphin veterinarian at the Navy. Uh, so that was uh, an unexpected um, happening. But I was, um, you know, veterinary epidemiologist and working, understanding large scale population health, mainly in people, and then was recruited by the Navy. Um, to help lead a clinical research program to continually improve the health of aging Navy dolphins. You know, they've had this population, sustained population of about 100 bottlenose dolphins for over 60 years. And you know, it's important that they go out into the open ocean every day um, uh, and every day they choose to come back and they get such good care, routine health care from the veterinary staff, from the, um, you know, from the folks there at the Navy's Marine Mammal Program, that, you know, on average dolphins in the wild live to about, live to about 20 years and dolphins in the Navy are now living up to 60 years old. So, wow. yeah, so they had this growing population of geriatric dolphins and I came in, I was brought in in part to understand aging related conditions and dolphins because we were seeing about one in three we're developing aging associated diseases like high cholesterol, chronic inflammation, fatty liver disease, even the full suite of changes consistent with Alzheimer's naturally occurring in about one in three dolphins. So we had this good, um, amazing opportunity to help dolphins um, through the Navy and also gain some insights into something that ended up being um, you know, a big discovery for all health, including humans. All right, we're going to talk about what Dr. Stephanie discovered about human health through this whole thing. If you are looking for a gift for Christmas, you are running out of time, you can join my wine club and you can give it as a gift to somebody or keep it for yourself. You get six bottles of these really limited edition wines from extremely remote regions of the world, Chile, Argentina, France, Spain, Italy. The Argentina wines are usually grown between six and 9,000 feet. So they're extreme altitude wines. The grapes are working very hard for your palate. It's a great way to support the show. You, like I said, get six bottles every three months. So you keep them for yourself. You'll just keep one on hand as a gift. 
you unfriended somebody on Facebook and feel really bad about it, you could just bring them a bottle of wine and it'll all be history. AllisonWinePromo.com. Hope to see you over there. These are all wines that were selected for stuff that I like. Clean products, natural fermentation, um, no added dyes and flavorings and preservatives and stuff like that. AllisonWinePromo.com. Thanks so much. Everybody's already on the wine club. Okay. So let's go to Serafina Therapeutics. Okay. This is uh, one of your websites, SerafinaTherapeutics.com. And uh, well, another place that people can go is just fatty15, right? .com, I think, is another website. And fatty15 is what we're going to talk about right now. Okay. So t take us back to like when you were even starting to look at um, it, like, were you coming across this organically, this fatty acid that you discovered, or did you just, uh, you were looking at something else and you happened to come across it? Yeah, it was, it was the latter. So we, um, you know, so we're seeing that one in three older dolphins were developing this syndrome. Uh, we know it mainly as metabolic syndrome is what it's commonly referred to. Um, and then what it looks like that then includes things like fatty liver disease, right? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or mass hold, it's now called, didn't exist in humans. Uh, didn't wasn't known in humans until 1980. The first 30 cases were reported by Mayo. Today, one in three people globally have um, fatty liver disease. And interestingly, we were seeing this pop up in the dolphins um, uh, around the same time. Which makes me think too, didn't they originally blame it on alcohol right after my wine sponsor? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I'm like, no, yeah, no, it's not alcohol. I bought, I mean, yeah. it's, and now we can prove that because if the dolphins, I mean, I don't know, maybe the dolphins are on the Allison Wine promo list, but yeah, it seems like dolphins are not drinking alcohol. So that's so interesting. Okay, so tell me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A spot on, spot on, Allison. So exactly. So um, we uh, we started publishing this work of finding this really unique, um, what we thought was a unique syndrome um, that was very specific in the dolphins. Uh, and exactly. So it's not alcohol. And then for fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD, which is now going through a rebrand, it's called MASLD. But um, that disease um, has been, a lot of it's been attributed to increased sugars and um, trans fatty acids and ultra processed foods. And again, that also is not going to explain why the dolphins were getting it. So we did, uh, we were able to apply this advanced technology called metabolomics. Um, all of this was done through Office of Naval Research Funding um, to help the dolphins. And what we found, metabolomics uh, allows you to look at thousands of small molecules present in both the dolphins archived serum that they collected as part of the routine healthcare as well as their all fish diet, because right, all dolphins eat are fish, but they eat five different types of fish. So we were able to use metabolomics to find which small molecules predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. We had assumed, Allison, that it was gonna be omega-3s because of fish and fatty acids. And uh, what we found was instead was C15, an odd chain saturated fat uh, was the top predictor of healthy aging dolphins. And that led, the, to the initial discovery that then uh, 10 years of research following that, that brings us to today. Okay. Well, how, how does it work? Like, what's the benefit of it and why are we lacking it? Right. So um, for us, so dolphins are developing relative C15 deficiencies because dolphins that were eating certain types of fish that had low C15 in it, they were developing C15 deficiencies. For us, our primary source of C15 is from whole dairy fat, right? And so- oh, okay. And like by far, like it's so important for our source for C15 that C15 for decades has been used as a measurement of how much dairy fat we eat. So what happens when we take whole dairy fat out of our diets, C15 levels go down. And okay. Why would a dolphin not be eating enough of what it's supposed to be eating? I mean, I know we get, you know, we're watching commercials and we have jobs that we decide are more important than taking time to eat right. Yeah. You know, one time I had a friend visiting, she's from uh, Eastern Europe, and she was talking about how when she first moved here in her 20s and got her first job, she was looked at kind of funny that she would take her lunch break in the actual lunchroom and take her whole hour. And people looked at her like she was not so like don't you want to get more work done like eat at your desk you know why are, and and she would have this whole spread like she couldn't even just eat it at her desk because she had so many different things and she said it just was so obvious that in the united states we look at food as just a means to an end 
to just mm -hmm. be more efficient. Like it's just a product that helps us be more efficient at whatever else we're trying to do. I, I'm totally to blame before I was had to rework my entire diet for health issues. And I thought I was doing pretty well, but I wasn't. You know, I would say, okay, got that out of the way when I would feed the kids dinner. Like, got that out of the way, you know? <laughs> like, wait a second, what am I doing? So I was like, totally one of those people. But why would a dolphin not be eating what it's supposed to be eating? Yeah, so the Navy, uh, up until the mid-1990s, uh, Navy dolphins were, one of their primary types of fish they were fed was called Yulacan. And this is a super fatty fish um, that is found um, up in the Northwest. Uh, and higher up into Alaska. And there's, they have so much fat in them, Allison, that they would call them candlefish. So like you could literally dry them, put a wick in it <laughs> and wow. light it as a candle. The Yulacan fisheries went dry. And mm. uh, so their primary source- Was that from overfishing? What from was overfishing. Okay. Yeah, from overfishing. Was and that so bycatch? They, I'm sorry? Do you know if it was bycatch or somebody else was trying to, to take them for like, like in other words, see a lot of people eat this fish. And so it was overfishing of that, or was it just bycatch for another type of fish? It's, I believe it's the, the former so that it was being caught basically for, because it's high fat content. Okay, I see. Um, so being able to be used for, um, fish oil, uh -huh. uh, fish oil supplements and things like that. So it yep. got over, they got overfished. And so they were no longer available to Navy dolphin program. Um, and then the, so the program moved to a variety of five different types of fish, three of them or two of them had no C15 in them. Uh, they were called capelin and squid. Um, and then the other three had some C15 in it. So we, it's, it, uh, so we were able to differentiate between dolphins who basically chose the low C15 fish versus the high C15 fish and over, you know, again, over a period of decades of, of 20 years, that then we were starting to able to see these chronic conditions show up similarly as a pattern of us taking having a decreased intake of mm -hmm. um, whole dairy fat and butter. Okay, so that led you into researching how it affects humans, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, how did you conduct that research? Right, so we were really lucky. So what was happening was that at the same time we were we published this work in dolphins, same thing was happening on the human side, that there were large scale studies being done showing that people with higher C15 have a lower risk of developing type two diabetes, fatty liver disease, heart disease. Um, these are associations. So it's really important, right? To know that this is association, not causation, but we were seeing the same patterns happening in both humans and dolphins. So from there, we then took pure C15, again, all of this funded by uh, Office of Naval Research to then to move pure C15 into the lab to understand how does it work? Does it, is it actually causing um, healthier aging? And that's where we found that C15, we did eight studies over three years, working with Dr. Edward Dennis, he's a leader in um, lipids. He was editor in chief for the Journal for Lipid Research for 15 years. When we first introduced this um, idea, uh, Allison to, uh, to Ed, he's like, chances are stuff that you didn't discover, like something big. <laughs> it's like the fatty acid world has known about C15 since the 1950s. It's this little saturated fat. But he's like, it, you know, let's take a look into it because the dolphin angle is interesting. So what happened over the next three years is that we're um, working alongside Ed that we were able to show that C15 has multiple roles and that uh, one of its primary roles is it is a stable fatty acid unlike polyunsaturated and omega-3s, which are oils at room temperature, this is solid at room temperature. And C15's mm. primary role is it a big role. It actually goes into each and every one of our cell membranes, right? We're made entirely of cells. All of our cells are protected by a bilipid layer of a cell membrane. We need a certain amount of C15 of the stable fatty acid in our cell membranes to keep them resilient and to protect them from breakdown of lipid peroxidation, which is one of the primary drivers of aging and of chronic diseases. So it's this very simple um, structure function role that C15 plays. And we need to have at least 0.2% of C15 in our cells. And if we have less than that, what we published a few months ago is that what we can develop cellular fragility syndrome, Mm -hmm. uh, which is the first deficiency syndrome um, found in 75 years. And it causes a whole new form of cell death that was discovered by researchers at Columbia University back in 2012 called phoroptosis. 
10,000 papers published on ferroptosis showing it accelerates aging and the onset of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease. All these papers, Allison, but nobody could figure out why it showed up out of nowhere and all of a sudden is having this massive effect on a global basis until the dolphins revealed helped us um, understand that C15 deficiencies were driving this fragility syndrome and proptosis. Okay, there's a question about this over on Locals. So we're gonna go there in a second. Don't forget though, you can support my show through the mail. If you're somebody who still likes to write real letters, please do that. Pull out your pen and paper, send me a letter. I love the notes of encouragement. You can send tips um, to support the show. If you're somebody who likes cash, you don't wanna use your credit card online. You're one of those people who lives in an underground bunker, basically like I would if I didn't live in Florida where <laughs> they flood. You know what, actually there's a condo on the beach near where my parents live that has their whole basement is where the electricity unit is for the entire condo. And it flooded during the hurricane. Now they're running on a generator for like hundreds of condos. Who puts their electricity in the basement? I don't know in Florida, but anyway, PO box three, three, five, five, Danelle in Florida, three, four, four, three, two. You can send me seeds for the garden, uh, books for the kids. They do open the mail on the way home. So nothing creepy. And I basically say nothing edible because I'm going to assume you're trying to kill me. But if you want to send me like, Hey, I have a grass fed beef share or something. Let's work out a deal. I would love that. Just don't send the cow to my PO box. Okay. Let's go over to locals. Is this is a good question. Alsamara.locals.com from critical thought. What does the good doctor know about the type of intelligence displayed by the dolphins? Wait, I wanted to ask this one first. If we consume two teaspoons of organic grass fed butter per day, will we get enough of the C15 we need for a long, healthy life, assuming everything else in our lifestyle is adequate? Yeah, this is a great question. So um, there are really there are three good points being made by this question. So the first is that we can get we need about 100 to 200 added C15 in our diet per day to not be deficient. That two tablespoons of butter can get us there, especially if it's grass fed. So studies have shown that grass fed um, cows produce whole fat milk that has twice as much C15 in it than cows fed corn. So spot on, uh, and cheers to to the uh, um, to to the comments thought. for us, and that we need to revisit nutritional guidelines carried by CDC, World Health Organization, and USDA. Um, you know, being a veterinarian, uh, you know, is an extra a dolphin veterinarian right, is an extra step to have to overcome um, mm -hmm. to be able to. But we're move our movement is on it's active again this book from simon and schuster the credibility from leaders in the field we're now understanding like we really need to listen and pay attention to you know changes that can have a, a meaningful effect okay yes i wanted to pull that up can people buy that because i wasn't sure if it was out yet they can so yeah fatty 15.com um, um is where they can get it okay so have the product um and allison if you want we're uh, more than happy to share uh uh, a code for you as well that you could share on your your channel if you like. Oh yeah, go ahead. Do you want to give it now? Uh, let's we'll see. Have one now. Your, well, we can. We don't have. We how about we'll like to share it in your your show notes. You don't have to. I can do that, but why don't what we if call we it? Took a risk and said Allison works. A L I S. That works. Just, we'll do Allison, not, and then actually just, just add to people like I'm not getting paid or anything. I didn't bring Dr. Stephanie on here. I'm not getting any. Yeah you know, pay, uh, pay or anything on this, but she's just, she's just spontaneously offering you guys a promo yeah. code. And if you want to get it, you might as well get a discount on it. Um, okay. Check the show notes for sure. But yeah. And give us, give us a few moments to be able to get that code up and running. Um, okay. and again, not for, not because again, you asked for that at all, um, but happy to be able to provide, um, your listeners and your viewers, um, uh, and add a discount. Um, if okay. They, and we'll put Allison um, as the code, but yeah, um, yes, we're sorry for that. But if they can't make it happen, check the show notes. So just you make sure for sure you, yeah. And then um, you can also just if you want to read more about her work too, you can go to Serafina Therapeutics as well. Okay, sorry I cut you off. What were you about to say? No, that's great. So um, yeah, that's that's where you can get um, Body Fifteen. We. Uh, but didn't you write write a book called The Longevity Nutrient? That is that. Can they buy that here? Uh, they. That's a good question. Uh, anywhere books are sold, uh, you can okay. get the longevity. So it's called the, the longevity, longevity nutrient. Simon and Schuster reached out last summer. Um, it's you know this started as a TED talk and then 
really has grown into this movement. Um, Simon and Schuster reached out over the summer and said, we've been following your science and your story. And this seems like an important oh, um, so that, oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so they, uh, so yeah, so the book is on pre-sale now. Uh, it comes out March 25th, uh, 2025.